Hello fellow travelers! In this video I'll show you my thought process regarding team building and strategy for current Spiral Abyss. I'll explain everything that gives you advantage, but it's up to you to choose what you should capitalize on based on your characters and playstyle. Don't worry, I'll give you examples. Few important things to mention before we begin. First, you shouldn't always try to make your team around the buffs. You can get better results using good teams of well-built characters that work well together and utilize weaknesses of floor enemies, rather than trying new team compositions featuring weaker characters or ones that might not work well together just for the sake of getting benefits from Blessing or Leyland Disorder. Also, make sure you have ways to protect yourself to be able to ignore incoming damage for the sake of dealing more damage yourself. Include at least some form of healing or shielding in your teams, at least on higher floors. Once you reach the point where you can't make strong teams to clear the entire floor, focus on one chamber at a time, even if it means that you'll have to suffer with the previous chambers. It's your best chance to earn more stars. Just finish the previous chamber with healed characters and full energy to get maximum advantage for the one you focus on. Same goes for benedictions. It's generally better to use ones that affect the entire floor unless you are in chamber 3 or trying to clear specific chamber, so I won't mention those. Now let's start with current blessing. It gives you 40% dendro damage bonus and true damage shockwaves forever, as long as you keep constantly triggering dendro related reactions to refresh its duration. And it's a lot of bonus damage for any dendro based team. On floor 9 we see very good bloom buff. Even though fungi have increased dendro resistance, dendro buffs still make it worth it. And hydro slimes should give you easier time triggering bloom. Fungi also have increased resistance to their elements and the only one missing here is animal, so it will be a good alternative for main source of damage. Same goes for physical damage. When we have a lot of small enemies, having a way to gather them all together is very helpful, so bring some crowd control or at least a character that can reach flying enemies and bring them down. Also, in fight with several enemies, utilize the fact that most of attacks have AoE. Even without crowd control, keep in mind that melee enemies will come towards you and by circling around ranged ones you can keep them all clumped up and thus deal damage to several enemies at once with each attack. This basically multiplies your damage output. For the second half we have a bunch of enemies again, so crowd control will be very useful there as well. Human enemies have slightly reduced physical resistance, so you can rely on physical damage here. During the fight, focus on ranged enemies. Melee ones will follow you anyway, so you'll deal with them in the process. There's a little trick that you can use here on the first wave. If you run far away from ranged enemies, they will move closer to you and thus become closer to each other, which can help you fight them both at once. Chamber 2 is about crowd control again, but this time we have shields, and they can block damage, from Bloom as well. You can burn wooden shields with pyro and break rock shields with heavy stuff like claymores, plunging attacks, explosions and certain abilities. Basically everything that works for breaking ores. Otherwise you'll have to use abilities that hit not from your character, like preplaced AOEs, or circle around these enemies for each hit. Metachurals have increased physical resistance and Samachurals have increased resistance to their respective elements, which means Geo and Cryo will work worse here. In battle, focus on small churls since bigger ones come for you anyway. Remember that you can drop them from pillars using archers or pulling abilities and pillars will be gone as soon as you kill the caster, so you don't have to break them yourself. For the second half we have to break Hydro Shield, for which Dendro works best, and it will give you free bloom, so is Hydro Slimes. But we also have Dendro Samachurl and Pyro Slimes, and Dendro is worse against them. Bloom buff and blessing still make it worth it, but the next best option for Hydro Shields is Cryo, and it fits much better here, so I'd go with it. Note that Hydro Abyss mages have different auras on them. Deal with the most annoying one for you first, but I'd advise you to focus the one with cooldown increasing aura first if you rely on skills and bursts to deal with the shields. Last chamber features a bunch of fungi again, and since we had fungi in chamber 1, it's basically the same thing here, just apply what we've learned before. 
Second half, however, features two Eremite elites with auras, and they are very annoying if you can't kill them quickly. The best way to fight them is to use freeze team compositions, or at least protect yourself with a shield. Focus the cryo one first to get rid of ice traps and be able to move freely. That's what we get in the end. And those were my teams for it. But they were overpowered for this floor, so I also finished it with these earning 9 stars. And those characters weren't great. Floor 10 buff encourages you to use Dendro again, but this time with Electro. And in the first chamber we have basically the same picture as on floor 9, but with Electro replacing Hydro, so I won't go through it again. For the second half we have two very bulky enemies with increased physical and hydro resistance. Due to their size it's much easier to focus them one by one, hitting both with AOEs when possible. Freeze teams and high poise damage work exceptionally great here. For the second chamber physical damage is better again since we fight human enemies, and a way to pull all crossbowmen will help you deal with them much quicker. After dealing with them, you should focus on killing both Kairagi at the same time. If you kill one of them, the other one restores HP and buffs himself, and it's a major time loss. So distribute your damage equally between them, and maybe use heavy hitting AOE abilities as a finishing blow or freeze to win few extra seconds. During second half we have to deal with Electro shields. Cryo, Pyro and Dendro are the best tools for it. You can use Dendro and benefit from floor bonus, but after the shields are gone you'll have to apply Electro yourself and Lava Churl is extremely resistant to it. So unless you want to rely solely on spread and use Electro just to trigger quicken, I'd suggest you to use Pyro or Cryo teams instead. Lava Churl also has high physical resistance, so using elemental damage is better. In the beginning of a fight start fighting Lava Churl. Abyss Mage will teleport straight to you and you'll be able to damage both shields. Lava Churl loves launching himself and will give you time to focus on squishy Abyss Mage first. Lava Churl's aura periodically drains energy from you, so don't store your burst for later while fighting him. Chamber 3, human enemies all along, you know what that means. At half HP Fatui skirmishers activate their unique shields which susceptible to only one element, taking almost no damage from others, so if you can't kill them quickly, bring Hydro and Electro to counter those. Focus Hydro guy first since he is a healer. Some form of crowd control and bubbles generated by lovely Eremite girl can help you with that. For the second half we have enemies with increased Hydro and Electro resistance. Mirror Maiden also has cooldown increasing aura, so if you can focus her ignorance in mages, go for it. But she has twice more HP, so if you lack damage, it's easier to get rid of them first. As always with few strong enemies, freeze teams work great here, especially with some way to pull them all together. And remember that you can quickly deplete shield of raging Sissin mage using Pyro, Cryo or Dendro, instead of running away from her wasting time. Those are my teams for this floor, but they seemed too powerful, so once again I tried to reduce power level and got 9 stars with these teams as well. Floor 11 has the best bonus so far. Additional elemental mastery simply boosts all reactions damage, so don't rely on physical damage teams here. Since Spectres got nerfed, they can be easily pulled together with crowd control abilities. They don't have a lot of HP, but they are immune to their own elements, so rely on Pyro, Electro or Dendro for this one. For the second half we have familiar enemy composition and the only thing to add here is that Fatui agent has increased Pyro resistance, so rely on something else if possible. During the fight new enemy appears every time you kill one, so fight near crossbowmen. Every other enemy is melee, so they'll come to you anyway. And as always, freeze makes fighting final elites much easier. Chamber 2 starts with duo skywatch fight, and it's just one more reason to avoid physical damage teams. In the beginning of a fight, move to the side and quickly bring them down close to each other with an archer to deal damage to both at the same time. Just repeat this if they wake up while you're still far from killing them. You don't even have to charge your shots, simply hitting either glowing core or both thrusters with aimed attack is enough to stun them, so it won't take much time. Even though we have human enemies for the second half, relying on reactions is more efficient because of the floor buff. 
Wave starts with few Nabushi groups and the best thing you can do to save some time is to not let them dash around using freeze or crowd control. Or just rely on ranged characters and don't bother. New Nabushi spawns as soon as you kill one, so killing them together with AVEs makes them spawn in packs of three close to each other, saving you more time. For the final wave, quickly deal with treasure hoarders first and then show that mirror maiden what you got, but remember that she is resistant to Hydro. In the last chamber we have Duo Geo Wishop team, and they are similar to Wishop from floor 10, but with increased Geo resistance instead of Hydro. They also gain additional resistance to absorbed elements, so Cryo and Electro will work worse here as soon as they transform. But they will be imbued with those elements for the rest of the fight, granting you free elemental reactions. I highly recommend to bring a shield or at least enough healing to survive a mess this fight turns into if your damage is low. Second half is just Dendro Cube. I have few videos on my channel if you want more details, but here's the short version. Electro and Pyro are good and you'll need Dendro. Or not. If you have ways to pull the cores, it takes about the same time. Links in the description if you are interested. Here's the summary and my teams for this floor, and just to make sure I did it with less powerful teams earning 9 stars. Floor 12 is a good example of poor level design. It's hard just because enemies have a lot of HP and you have tight time limits. So yes, you have to reach certain power level to make it in time. But power is not everything. First chamber starts with constantly spawning Rift Hounds, and they only weak to Electro damage, so boost it to the max. You can add Dendro for Aggravate and utilize Blessing Bonus, or Hydro to boost your swirls due to Electro Charge specifics. And yes, you do need those swirls. Bring all AoE Electro damage you can get. Also, you have to bring at least some healing to negate corrosion, because even if you dodge attacks, you are still vulnerable during burst animations. Remember that your non-active characters can't die from corrosion, so healing only active character is enough. It's better to fight Rift Hounds near the border of Arena to limit their movement at least a little bit, so try to push them there with your crowd control abilities. As soon as bigger ones appear, start focusing on them. Leftover whelps will die from AoE damage. In second half, we have Thunder Manifestation, and this boss loves wasting your time. It can teleport or launch itself across the arena, or simply hang in the air making the fight much more annoying for melee characters, so I highly advise you to rely on ranged characters here to make those moves less impactful. Dendro is amazing choice here for free spread buffed with the blessing, but Pyro or Cryo work well too. If you feel like you almost make it in time with your best team, you can try to restart this floor a couple of times. There's a lot of randomness in both halves and you might get lucky and shave those last few seconds. Black Serpents in second chamber have increased physical resistance, as well as resistance to their own element. It's not as bad for Cryo since there will be just a single defender and he's a ranged guy so he has less HP than others, so good freeze teams might still work. Other than that, constantly pull them all together and rely on AoE damage. These guys also hard counter shields by gaining strong buffs when they attack a shielded character, so don't rely on them. Second half features Cryo and Electro Lavaturals, and since Pyro counters both, it will be your best bet. They appear in couples and you have to get rid of their shields as fast as possible. They become way less scary once you break them. Last chamber starts with Eon Blight Drake fight. It has very high physical resistance, but all you need for an easy fight is any archer to bring it down as soon as it flies up. And don't waste your resources in the very beginning while it's waking up. It has a lot of additional resistance during that, so use this time just to generate energy and prepare to take it down. And finally, we have two latest Aramite Elites. Oh, and Fatui dudes, but they are not a threat comparing to Aramites. At 70% HP, they summon their pets and gain a lot of additional resistance. Pets are vulnerable to Animo and Geo respectively, and if you kill them, Aramites will lose part of their current HP and will get reduced resistance to Animo and Geo as well. But I can't think of a way to buff both Animo and Geo in one team aside from just having really good characters. Plus, there is an Electro Shielder inside, and they are not the best options to deal with it. 
Instead, it's better to rely on freeze teams. Freezing or petrifying Eremites will delay their enhanced state for quite a while, allowing you to deal more damage all this time, so you will be able to push the rest of the damage through increased resistance in reasonable time without dealing with their pets. For the first wave, start fighting Gale Thunder, Fatui will join you quickly. And for the second wave, do the opposite, Stone Enchanter will jump on you anyway. And be ready to tank some waves he causes, you won't have time to dodge all of them. I was able to clear this entire floor with these teams, pause if you want to check the details, but it was easier to use different teams for each chamber. You are a legend if you made it to this part. If you have any questions or more ideas, please share them in the comments and let's help everyone get those precious gems. But that's all I have for now, fellow travelers. Subscribe for more tips and have a great rest of your day. See ya!